you. I didn't know whether to make this a checks and balances video or a psyche video. Maybe I'll put it on both channels, uh, both playlists. I don't know. But I hope you have your coffee ready. Or something maybe a little stronger. Because what I'm about to tell you is something that a lot of folks with egos don't want to hear. I'm going to be straight up with you about this. People don't talk about this. I'm going to share with you my six plus years of experience in the quote unquote quantum grammar domain, dealing with all sorts of folks all over the face of the earth. Yes, we could say in all four corners of the globe, or we could say all around the planet, whatever you want to say. What I'm saying to you is this applies to every single scenario I've ever been involved in or seen. The question is, why can't or won't the major figures in the quote-unquote alternative sector, the folks fighting for freedom, the folks that say they have the solution, why can't they all work together? Why can't they just get along? It's my experience. And I include myself in the group of all these folks out there because I do have a platform and I do have a pretty solid subscriber base. As small as it might be, I still have a base. So I include myself. It has to do with ego. In my almost seven years of teaching correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar to folks all over the earth from different cultures, different races, different countries, where, wherever the hell you are, what I've found is those folks who possess the capacity to learn this grammar, those folks who possess the correct neurological pathways to accept closure on this, to cognize it, and then actually be able to use it, they have very, very strong what we call personalities. Very strong wills. Very strong volition. Without fail, every single one of them. And what I have found when communicating and interacting with these personalities is that they don't work well together. Whenever you have a relationship of two people or two or more people, there's always going to be the one personality that quote unquote wins and the other personalities yield to that winner. I'll give an example right off rip. I created a telegram group a couple years ago where I had a, some of my best students in there, my most promising students. I wanted to create a community where the advanced students could share advanced questions and I would answer them. What I found was that those personalities, when I stepped away and they were left to their own devices, could not regulate themselves. It was a matter of winning or losing, whether someone's correct or not correct, and they would get into arguments and things like that. And the only way to alleviate that is if I stepped in. And when I step in, they all think that I'm the authority of that construct, so then my word is correct. So there, there's a dichotomy here. If everyone's supposed to be equal on a geometric level playing field of equality, then why does there have to be yielding between being correct or not correct? Folks, I'm going to tell you that that is not correct psychology if you truly want to be peaceful and neutral. Yes, there is yielding involved in those relationships of two or more people. Another firsthand example, my tutor Raven and myself. I yield to Raven's authority when it comes to knowledge of grammar because I know he's my tutor and I give him that honor. 
If we've ever been in an argument, for whatever reason, I yield. Because I know that we are such strong personalities that if we don't yield and we do this, then we're going to separate and there's going to be no more communal feeling there. We're going to separate and go our separate ways and probably not be close again or anything like that. Russell J. Gould, Mark Schoen, Christopher, David Wynn Miller, all these folks that are no different. There are no, there, there's no difference there. And I'm not comparing myself to any of those folks. I'm using them as examples. For example, Colin David Ivan Colin Miller will always be the smartest guy in the room. There is no one that is going to outsmart David Wynn Miller because he has an answer for everything. Whether the answer actually answers the question or not doesn't matter. Irrelevant. He's still going to hold court and be the guy, no matter what the scenario. Even after he's passed, he passed away in 2018. Even now, there are some folks out there that hold a candle, hold a torch for David Wynn Miller. He still holds that position for them. No matter what I say, no matter how many mistakes I find in his grammar, in the publicly available documents, these folks are still going to say that David Wynn Miller is the authority in the room and what he says trumps everybody else. And I'm not using the word Trump in a political manner. So this is all psychology. So maybe I will include this in the Psyche playlist. Keep that in mind, folks. This is the bare bones, blunt truth. You're in a relationship. Think about it. Two or more people. It doesn't matter if it's with your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your child, your spouse, your partner. There's yielding involved here. It's never truly equal. Again, to bring it back to a firsthand experience, myself and my students, no matter how strong their personalities are, they out of necessity and out of the correct way of doing things would necessarily yield to me. However, I feel that I'm a little bit different in this aspect because if they bring to me a mistake that they find, if they question me on something that's valid, that they can show it continues to the evidence that, hey, Jason, what you're saying here doesn't really quite add up because I've looked this up and it, it says this, this, and that, and the third I'm more than willing to look at it if you come to me like that in a correct manner. And you say, hey, look at this, blah, blah, blah. I will look at it. I will do forensics on it. And if you're correct and I'm wrong, I will humbly admit that I'm wrong and I will stop and correct. But that does not change my position as a tutor. In my mind. In your mind, it may. If you think that you've found that I've done a mistake and because this mistake has happened and you've corrected me on it and you think you are somehow above me in knowledge, that's fine. But you're definitely going to have to step up to the plate and prove that. Otherwise, we're just going to go our separate ways. Strong personalities, folks. This is what I've been saying. So you can, you can transpose this to the Russell J. Gould scenario. Why, when you see Russell getting on these podcasts and talking with Sasha Stone, Anna Von Rietz, or Rietzinger, any of these other so-called, you know, whatever you want to call them, freedom fighters, I don't know. It always starts off good. Lady Crown, the Purple Thumb community, it always starts off so good. They agree on so many things. They're going to work together. And then it just falls apart. Why? Well, it's my view and my guess that Russell has to be the guy in charge. He has to be the chief. And if you don't bow down, and at least admit that he's chief or call him chief, he's not going to deal with you. He's not even going to talk to you. I mean, look what he did with the grammar technology. Look what he did. 
Before, before David Wynn Miller passed away, the grammar technology was out there for anyone to use it. You cannot find a video prior to 2018 where anybody, either Russell or David, says that you must have their permission to use this grammar, that you need their permission to use the flag, that you need to send your live life claims to them. You can't find it. It won't, you won't find it because it didn't exist because the grammar was given freely. The flag was open for anyone to use if they had the knowledge level to use it. Live life claims three or more witnesses because three is trust. And then all of a sudden when David passed away, Russell, i.e., uh, Russell modified, i.e. changed everything. Change is modification. Modification is perjury. David was gone. As I've said in so many videos in the past, David once told me that two is certification. That David would write a document and he would send it to Russell and Russell would double check it. And so they would certify and both autograph the document. But then David passed away, and it left only Russell. One is opinion. Two is certification. One is opinion. Do you get my meaning? So then Russell came in in 2018, a month after, a month or so after David passed away, and began changing the way things worked. He rolled out in his Reno seminars, well, if you're using this technology, you need my thumbprint and my autograph on the document. You need my permission to do that. And so he began changing things because he felt the need to be in charge for whatever reason. I know he gave the dog water excuse that, oh, he didn't want the technology to fall into bad hands. And that propaganda narrative began with the, with the war castles with Sergeant Robert Horton and all that BS. Not true, folks. This technology is out there for anyone to use. And with my experience and my knowledge of, of the history of this grammar, no one has ever been able to use it for evil purposes, ever. It's always blown up in their face. Backfired. It just doesn't work that way. It only works with correct volition. But Russell's not going to tell you that because for whatever reason, he puts it behind a paywall and probably makes thousands of dollars. I mean, I've seen some people affiliated with him charging a million dollars for a syntax course that's full of bullshit. There, I said it. And it's the same with any of these other folks out there that I've seen, like the quote-unquote quantum grammar coach. Uh, who's the other guy? A guy that shares my first name, Jason. Jason Paul Grievous. They all sell things, but it's incorrect grammar. It's fractured. It doesn't make any sense. People in the same category, I put them in the same category as Russell. They want you to believe that they're commander of something, that they're chief of something, mustard master of something. They claim to be in command of the military, but they've never done a day of boot camp or anything like that. Folks, I have military contacts, okay? Real true blue people who have done service, fought. They know the system, and they know that folks like Russell and Jason Paul Grievous are full of BS. They wouldn't know the first thing about fighting or strategy as far as military goes. So to bring it back to the original topic, just to reiterate and try and, I guess, highlight what I'm, the point I'm trying to make here. When I would create a Telegram group or a WhatsApp group a couple years ago of my most advanced students, or my, my students with the most potential. I tried to create a group so that they could communicate among themselves and share knowledge and so on and so forth. 
But unfortunately, at the time, I was very busy doing workshops and things like that. I didn't have time to babysit the group or to run the group or moderate the group, however you want to say it. So because I wasn't there, they didn't want to be there. But if I was there, then they wanted to be there. I told the group, you know, I got to step away. I don't have time for this. There's just not enough people participating or asking questions for me to look at this every day. But if you folks want to continue on amongst yourselves together, you're more than welcome to. Who wants to take over? Who wants to be the moderator? Who wants to take responsibility for this group? No one stepped forward. No one. No one wanted responsibility for it. No one wanted to be there anymore. So I deleted the group. And this is what I'm saying. I have found that those who possess the capacity to gain a good solid closure on this grammar, good enough to use it and articulate it and the skill to teach it, and once they reach that level, more than likely, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they have a very strong personality. And when it comes time to work with another very strong personality, it usually doesn't pan out very well because there's yielding involved and no one really wants to yield. It's a psychology thing. Again, I'll say it, folks. I don't have a problem yielding to anyone who can show me a correct continuance of the evidence of why I would need to do so. Up until that point, I will not do it. I will not yield. And that's just the way life is if you look at any of your relationships. And again, I didn't. it doesn't matter which one it is, two or more people, you will find yielding involved. It's just what happens. And it comes with cultivating humility or not. So again, when folks say, why can't we just all get along and work together and blah, 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 I've just given you the reason. I've just given you the pressure on that as to why it doesn't happen and will never probably happen. We try to make things as fair as possible. But at the end of the day, who's in charge of your construct? Is it me or is it you? Is it me or is it you? Is it me or is it you? You know the answer to that. And so you know why people in this domain will probably not ever come together as a community to do anything. However, they will do it on their own individually and that, in turn, as more people learn it and use it, will be very powerful. But as far as a community, a group of people, it won't work. You can look at the Syntax Learning Center or the Quantum Community or the Red Thumb Club or whatever they're calling themselves this month. You can look at them and, and find that every single one of those paying members of that little club or center or group Every single one of them bow down and kiss the ring or the butt of Russell J. Gould. They are all subservient to him. They all submit to his authority, his ultimate authority. And the folks that are directly under him treat him as if everything that comes out of his mouth is gold. And at their little meetings that they have, and I have first-hand knowledge of this because I've heard recordings of it. They will get together, and whoever last spoke to Russell on the phone, they're the ones that are in charge of the meeting. They suddenly have authority because they were the last ones to speak, speak to Russell, and they're quoting, parroting, repeating what he says. It's really goofy. But, I mean, if that's your thing if you like authoritarianism, if you love the fiction system we're in now and you love that chain of command type of military type of uh, construct, hey man, there's plenty of it for you out there. You can get right in on that. That's fine. That's not for me though. 
I prefer to be out here all alone by myself doing whatever I do, helping people who want help. That's where I'm at. I don't need to be in charge of anybody. I don't need to be anybody's leader. Nor do I want to, because if you really want to be autonomous, then you're not going to submit to me or anyone else. You're going to step up and do what you need to do to gain your autonomy. And whether that's learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar or not, that's completely up to you. But I hope you've taken these lessons to heart. Keep this in mind. As you're watching these other internet personalities talking about this, that, or the third, keep in mind what I'm saying. None of these folks, if they even claim they're going to work together, will probably not work together for very long. And if they do have a lasting relationship, you're going to clearly be able to see who's in charge and who has taken a step down and yielded. David Wynn Miller, Russell J. Gould. What more can I say? Not much. Thanks for watching.